Attitude is everything. You know what somebody said this? Attitudes are feelings or thoughts that affect the way we behave. Attitudes do that. And how often have you said, and how often have I said, and how often have we thought, jeez, that oak's got an attitude. Hey? Especially when kids are changing, or especially when someone you don't know comes in and they're a little bit sassy. What an attitude that person has. You see, attitude is shaped. Attitude is shaped through culture. Attitude is shaped through religion, through our peers, through our family. And family is the most influential attitude shaper ever. If we don't shape our family attitude, our kids are going to be the people at the end of that thing. Gee, what an attitude that kid's got. Attitude is shaped by instruction and modeling. And truth, attitude is more caught than taught. That's how it works. So here's the deal. Everyone has an attitude. And wherever you go, you go with your attitude. Attitude is a choice. It's created in our thoughts. And our thoughts are influenced by what we see, hear, smell, taste, and experience. You know that. Good, bad, and ugly. So when it comes to rubber hitting the road, where life really happens for all of us, which is in our relationships, our family, the attitude we're carrying around is determining how we're behaving wherever we are. I want to give you a little glimpse into life's reality. What you see at home with attitude is seen outside your home. Same thing. Nothing changes. You can put a nice towel on or a nice whatever, but the attitude is inside and it's influencing us. So I want to talk about some attitudes. You can get a bad attitude. Do you know what a bad attitude is? It's that unchecked spirit. It's that... Um, Bad attitude, that rudeness, that, that cheekiness. Young and old have them. That disrespectfulness, that entitlement, bad attitude. So when you say, oh, man, that guy's got a, a bad attitude, you know what type of person we're talking about. Or you can also get a negitude. A negitude is the, the woe is me person. It's always raining. It's always gloomy. How are you? I'm tired. I'm depressed. The world is going to end tomorrow. Negitude. Man, pessimistic view of life and living. And you know, I want to tell you, pessimistic people, people with a negitude, that, I want to say this, it leads to depression because you're so sad, sad on the inside. And negative thinking becomes negative behavior. It's like a half glass empty person, you know, half empty glass person to life. How's life? Yeah, it's fun. But I know none of you know anyone with a negative, hey? No one? No one know anyone with a bad attitude? Stop nudging each other, man. <laughs> and you know, from a negative, it's easy to develop a sad attitude. You know that, hey? You can see a sad attitude. How are you? I'm fine. How's life? It's fine. But I think uh, if the sun rises, it might be better. Hey, yeah. Satitude, man. And then you get people who've got a, a matitude. You know what a matitude is? They're the people who live on the hooter in the car, they are just grumpy. They allow their anger to dominate their emotions and therefore dominate their thinking, and therefore dominate their anxious. And the scary thing is, in the world we're living in, anger is increasing in people's behavior. There are a lot of people with a matitude. You say things you want to say, and you don't care what happens. And then you get people with a positude. You know what a positude is, eh? A positive is a person who sees life through a, a half full glass. They're the good people to be around. If you're a sad attitude, you look for a bad attitude. No, you look for a positive person all the time. Because if you're a sad attitude and you got a bad attitude, you'll end up as a mad attitude. You know what I mean? It's only down, it's spiraling down. 
But it can be a bit tough if you're a negitude and you're in the company of a positude. You know what I mean? It becomes an arm wrestle. Which tude is going to win? They're such cheery people to be like. They're the ones who speak to the sun and it just pops up. He say, I told you. And it's bright and breezy, but it's raining. I know, but the sun's behind the clouds. <laughs> positude people. Do you know any positude people? Do you got a positude in your house? They're the most irritating people, hey? <laughs> Be- especially if you're a bad attitude or a sad attitude or a negative. Just go back to sleep. And then you get people who've got a, a gladitude. And they're just happy about life. They're just grateful. How are you? I'm fine. I'm just so grateful. You see them holding their pulse. I've got a pulse. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm alive. It's a, it's a gratitude. The attitude of gratitude. Man, it is so good for the soul. You know, people have written theses on gratitude. Do you know that? You can go and Google. You can find there are people with PhDs. And they don't just pull teeth out. They're proper, proper doctors. And they study human behavior. And gratitude is one of the most powerful attitudes that people can have. It's so good for our soul. Listen to what the Word of God says about shaping attitude and how we can help each other develop a gratitude. Hmm? Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. You see, God is a positive. God is a good attitude. And for some of us, if our attitudes are wrong, we'll believe that the will of God is bad or sad or gloomy. But the Word of God says the will of God is good and pleasing and acceptable. And you want to be around someone whose mind has been renewed and is learning to live on the road called straight that Jesus called them to live on because they know this is a good way to live, to live in the will of God. If you're young, if you're under 40, (laughs) if you're young, you have to develop a process of letting God shape your mind so that you can have a a gratitude for your life because it is the thing that will bless you and bless your soul and bring well-being to your body and will bless those around you. Listen to what the scripture said in Philippians chapter 4. It says this, finally, friends, whatever is true and whatever is honorable and whatever is right, but the world sucks. And everyone's shooting each other and there's so many poor people and hungry people and look at porn and, and the road rage. and it is, Yes, and then the scriptures say whatever is good and whatever is honorable and whatever is right and whatever is pure. But there's so much degrading stuff happening in the world and people are living their worst life ever and the word of God says and, and um, whatever is lovely and whatever is of worthy of praise and whatever is of good repute. Yeah, but they cheat whatever is of good. It doesn't matter whatever is of good repute. And if there is any excellence in anything worthy of praise, stay on these things. You see, attitude is shaped. You're going to raise your kids. You're going to raise up your kids. You have to raise up your kids with a God attitude. You can shape them. You go, they come home and they're all gloomy and doomy and sad and they're going through hormonal change. And, and so listen to what I'm going to say here. You don't have to have a bad attitude or a sad attitude or a negative or a mad attitude. You can have a God attitude to life. You can put your foundations on the Word of God and you can believe it. And you can start walking in what He says. I can think on the good things. Teach your kids to think better. Teach your your kids to think on the honorable things and the right things. Stop talking about politics at your table. Just for one night a week. It'll change your life because you as a parent talk about attitude, your your political point of view, and we are a very that way family. But here's the deal. It sucks life out of your soul. Just stop for a moment at the dining room table and say, hey, tell me what good's going on in your life. 
and wait until it comes to the surface. Say, I thought so, nothing good's happening in you. Just wait. It will arise. And then it says this, and the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me practice these things. So here's the deal. Attitude is shaped not by what is said only, but what is seen, what is felt, what is experienced. We need a practice. You know, practice makes perfect. The more you practice to think well, the more well you think. Do you know that? The more well you become. John writes these words, John 3, chapter 1, he says, 3 John, chapter 1, he says this. He prays this prayer over us. He says, may you prosper. May you prosper. May you be well. May your well-being flourish. May you thrive. May you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. If you prosper on the inside, you'll be healthier on the outside. If you're prospering in your mind, you'll be prospering in your behavior. 